Greetings, everyone from Singapore Spine Society. Thank you for your invitation to talk about the management of cervical and, and degenerative conditions with endoscopic cervical forminotomy. This is my acknowledgement and disclosure for my conflict of interest. This is my scope of the talk. We'll be talking about the types of cervical endoscopic spine surgery, indications, contraindication. We do a literature review and the technique of PCF and potential complications. Recently in Global Spine Journal, they published an AO spine consensus on the nomenclature for working channel endoscopic spinal procedures. So we'll be focusing today on the cervical part, which uh, is on the uh, left side of the red colored box. You can see that anterior endoscopic cervical for discectomy, for minotomy, as well as that of the posterior endoscopic cervical discectomy and uh, unilateral laminotomy bilateral decompression. In the bipotal spine uh, endoscopy, they uh, mainly men mentioned as a UBE. Uh, however, there's actually more granularity than that. There's also a UBE cervical forminotomy and UBE posterior inclinatory forminotomy on top of uh, UBE anterior cervical fusion, which is uh, essentially a very new uh, procedure that's being performed. The indications for cervical endoscopic spine surgeries are similar to that of the open or tubular surgery. Many, uh, is a, uh, most common indications is radiculopathy. And uh, in essentially for prolapse in the vertebral disc or uh, syndesmophyte or foramenal stenosis, which does not involve more medial than the lateral third of the spinal cord on the MRI scan. For myelopathy, uh, it can be addressed for up to three levels in most of the literature uh, by uh, cervical endoscopic unilateral laminotomy and bilateral decompression. Due to the limitation of this uh, timing of the talk, uh, I will not touch on, on the management of myelopathy in this uh, symposium. Contraindications are instability, deformity, calcification of the disc. There's more than 50% of spinal canal, severe disabling, disabling uh, neurological deficits, more than three levels involvement, OPLL that's significant, severe myelopathy, and uh, patients who have infection tumor fractures in the spinal segment. We have uh, published our uh, literature on that, and uh, it can be referenced from the indication contraindication for surgery. There's some extended indications by one some of the well-renowned experts. Uh, they perform cervical disc replacement with uh, Dr. Lim Kantek, uh, demonstrating that in multiple forum and uh, fusion uh, without the plate or blade. Um, in bipolar, they also as the cervical fusion through the anterior approach in the limited cases and uh, laminectomy and lamino, uh, laminoplasty. Some of this uh, can be found in our articles published here in 2020. As we look back in the literature, there's limited literature on that of the uh, of the cervical endoscopy in uh, treatment of cervical conditions. The, a uh, large volume of literature on uh, ACDF as well as uh, posterior open cervical forminotomy or tubular forminotomy. However, open anterior procedure do have uh, com common complications, although most of them are self-limiting and largely ACDF is still a safe procedure, uh, but then we do worry about the approach related uh, complications such as dysphagia, uh, a post-operative hematoma, uh, as well as that of the hoarseness of voice, etc. And more importantly, there is uh, implant-related complications, such as that of the uh, loosening of implant dysphagia related to implant prominence, etc. Sun, uh, Dr. Sun Ho Lee from South Korea published in 27, uh, 2007, talking about anterior endoscopic cervical approach. Essentially, they perform uh, nucleoplasty and forminotomy uh, sorry, uh, for, uh, and a 
discectomy from the front with a bit of the foraminotomy. Uh, they essentially they perform a anterior endoscopic cervical discectomy from the front. They removed the disc. They did not uh, fuse for this group of patients, as you can see from the MRI pre and post op scan here. And they sub subsequently the same group, the uh, Yongan and Dr. Jin Song Kim also mentioned about the indications and contraindications for anterior endoscopic. Uh, cervical discectomy. However, there's also limited. Uh, there's also limitation to this approach due to the approach-related complications are pretty similar to that of the uh, ACDF. And furthermore, there is a uh, inability to uh, put in implants or plate through this approach. Until recently, there is a. Uh, uh, that Dr. Lim Kantek has uh, demonstrated uh, the placement of the fusion devices as well as the, this, uh, this replacement dev devices through this approach. So there are limited indications for anterior endoscopic cervical discectomy. And furthermore, um, sometimes persistent radicular symptoms, this anesthesia may also recur um, in an inexperienced surgeon through the anterior cervical approach. So it is important to perform this uh, anterior cervical discectomy surgery where vascular surgeon and uh, equipment may be prepared for unexpected intraoperative vascular insult. So as we know about this anterior approach, how about the posterior approach, which, which is quite common in the open and tubular approach. So um, Sebastian Rutten and Martin Kom et al, published their results uh, in two, 2007 that shows that um, posterior foraminotomy is a sufficient and safe supplement alternative procedure to conventional procedure when indication is fulfilled. At the same time, it offers advantages of minimally invasive intervention. And uh, subsequently, uh, C. H., Dr. C.H. Kim and his group do show that there's also uh, no worsening of cervical curvature after the posterior PECD with good results. So overall, the posterior approach has been subsequently developed and uh, more popular, and we have contributed to the literature as well on our two years result in the European Spine Journal published last year. And in the finite element studies by uh, Dr. Yu Chi et al., it shows that uh, posterior cervical foraminotomy probably is a better choice than anterior approach uh, because of the less likelihood of the of effects on the um, subsidence biology of the disc as well as that of the spinal segment. And uh, Dr. Ren et al. in their biomechanical comparison study um, shows that the cervical vertebrae after posterior endoscopic cervical discectomy uh, has good biological, biochemical performance and stability. In our studies, as, uh, for the two years follow-up, it shows that uh, despite the improved uh, clinical outcomes, and uh, there is also an increase in cervical foraminal size in our cohort of patients after two years, with majority of them demonstrating good and uh, excellent clinical outcome. Further on, we uh, propose a, a safer route of approach in uh, more complex foraminotomy and discectomy cases through this uh, partial pedicleotomy, partial vertebrotomy approach in a, a PECD or PECF. So how do we prepare our patients? Generally, I uh, recommend general anesthesia uh, rather than local and epidural anesthesia. Just to be aware that are uh, there are patients and uh, surgeons who choose uh, local anesthesia uh, in uh, several parts of the world, so it can be performed. But generally for the comfort uh, of the patient and safety, uh, I recommend general anesthesia. 
we typically need a scope, a dedicated cervical scope by various endoscopic company. Uh, if that is not available, an uh, interlaminal scope is my preference. Uh, transforminal scope is a bit longer, however, it can be performed using that as well. And we need a really good drill um, uh, for safe and uh, a progressive uh, for anatomy with a good visualization and uh, handling. Um, the radio frequency ablation is a very essential part of this surgery. The tip of ablator is very important. The fine tip specialized energy setting designed for spine is very important as the hemostasis is key for this surgery. Um, it's not recommended to increase the pump pressure during bleeding. I tend to keep the whole surgery around 25 to 30 mm Hg pressure. Uh, cervical neural elements is sensitive to radio frequency energy as well. Prolonged application or inappropriate uh, energy setting or wrong uh, choice of radio frequency ablation are detrimental for the surgery. If you have, if we have poor visualization, we should uh, convert to other types of surgery because poor vis visualization is uh, can lead to significant and severe neurological deficits in cervical scope. Um, in terms of the equipment, um, I, I, we wrote up on this paper uh, on the equipment. However, it's for thoracic spine. Uh, this uh, particularly designed for nurses. So, um, uh, but the equipment are similar in the cervical scope setting. In terms of positioning, uh, the C arm uh, is uh, located in the head, and the video is uh, uh, just uh, more distal to the C arm. In terms of positioning, the patient, uh, the surgeon will stand on the same side of the lesion uh, for uh, uniportal and uh, occasionally bipodal is stand the opposite side. Factors to consider for surgery, I think uh, in, uh, it's important to know the cervical endoscopic foramenotomy anatomy. There are some challenges in the anatomy of the foramen and nerve root. The nerve root can be in quite inconsistent and the spinal cord location in relation to the B point that I'm going to discuss later is uh, inconsistent. There is inconsistent nerve root location within the foramen that's due to the pathology or the variable distance between the pedicle or the nerve root. And uh, there is also a favorable space depending on individual for the discectomy. Uh, pathological changes affecting the space, such as syndesmophytes, the superior articular process hypertrophy, medial disherniations. This also pathological changes can lead to variation in the nerve root uh, position. This uh, video showing how we perform a right C67 PECF. This is a This patient fell in September last year and then subsequently had real unrelenting uh, constant right-sided uh, radicular pain and weakness of uh, C6 and 7. Uh, we can see that there is a soft uh, disc in the right C6-7 prolapse in the vertebral disc. She met the indication for both ACDF, tubular, open, or endoscopic forminotomy. Her choice was uh, so endoscopic for anatomy and, uh, and discectomy. We perform the soft tissue dissection, uh, exposing the feet point, which is essentially the lateral mass of the C67. Um, this on the right side endoscope. So uh, the three o'clock position is the top of the patient, and the nine o'clock position is the bottom of the patient. I'm standing on the right side. Now I'm drilling on the bottom, uh, the C7. Uh, careful like part of the uh, lateral mass. And then uh, I, I, I exposed the V-point and drew to, uh, I exposed the uh, pedicle and then uh, subsequently I drew down the pedicle to, uh, a, a, as shown here, partial pediculotomy. Usually we need uh, to drill the superior and uh, medial uh, part of the pedicle uh, just beneath the nerve root so that we can expose the disc space. Now we can expose the spinal cord and the nerve roots. There's usually some bleeding uh, if you breach the membrane. This fine can be stopped with the radiofrequency ablator. 
Uh, usually, uh, the lateral aspect of the SAP is the lateral margin. Also, we need to palpate the pedicle. Usually, we need to go just uh, as we go along this pedicle, you can see here, and then you go uh, beyond the lateral uh, margin of the pedicle to have a true decompression the entire, anterior, uh, entire uh, nerve root of uh, the C6 7 this space. The sitting nerve root is palpated as a no touch technique. We do not retract the spinal cord at all times. Uh, we can palpate the exiting nerve root gently. You can retract the exiting nerve root very gently, but not too uh, prolonged period, just to uh, perform the discectomy or in this case, a foraminotomy. So the entire course of C7 uh, nerve root can be seen. And then we explore the shoulder of the C7 nerve roots and there is no disc there. We uh, have a somewhat firm disc on the axilla, which uh, we partially removed and then uh, perform hemostasis. And you can see from the post-op scan that uh, from anatomy is complete with the facet uh, still uh, more than half being preserved. So the patient, the patient did very well, and um, so this patient did very well and discharged uh, next day. This is a typical patient. Uh, this two weeks after all. So how about bipotal surgery? Um, bipotal surgery has, uh, by Dr. Song, uh, has described as the inclinatory cervical technique as well as ipsilateral foraminotomy by most of the bipotal surgeon. In his paper, Dr. Song demonstrates that uh, there is an advantage in the inclinatory cervical foraminotomy technique in the sense that you can explore the foramen uh, in a wider area from the contralateral standing position. This uh, video showing uh, this uh, exam case exa example of this uh, type of surgery, a 52-year-old lady, uh, again, with right um, shoulder scapula and upper, uh, uh, upper arm pain, significant pain for six months and um, some weakness of the elbow fraction. And uh, you can see that there is a foraminal stenosis in this C5-6 and uh, he, we stand on the contralateral side and perform a right uh, bipotal inclinatory PCF. Uh, you can see it from the visualization. You can, uh, we are standing on the contralateral side and decompressing the, I mean, uh, the contralateral foramen, which is, uh, I'm standing on the left, decompressing on the right, C5-6. Uh, as you can see from the video, uh, you can uh, explore the spinal cord um, and then the exiting nerve root uh, visualized in a very nice manner by bipotal. Bipotal, as we know, comes from two different ports. So the working cannula and the viewing cannula are of, uh, from a different port and hence uh, there's freedom of movement of the uh, working instruments, as you can see here. So about ipsilateral foraminotomy is done by many of the uh, bipotal and unipotal surgeon. In bipotal, the docking point is also the V point. Uh, and then so we with two cm apart from the viewing and that's of the uh, working portal as you can see from here we drill the C2 uh, this is the uh, left side uh, and then we drill the cephalic lamina first in the uni portal we tend to drill also the cephalic lamina and then subsequently the uh, caudal lamina. So we drew the C2 until it's pretty thin. Uh, we drew till it's paper thin, and then we expose the pedicle, and we drill down the pedicle, as you can see here, similar to, very similar to the unilateral, uh, uniportal approach, which I have demonstrated just now. Once we drew uh, the pedicle, uh, just uh, underneath that of the nerve roots, we can uh, start exposing 
um, that's of the nerve root by using uh, very gentle curetting. When they are paper thin, using curette is sufficient to uh, basically uh, do the laminotomy. And uh, further drilling of the pedicle can be done uh, using a 3M member. In Bipoto, there's some freedom of movement and the water flow is, uh, if you ensure it's good, actually visualization is quite good. Uh, same as Uniporto, you have Uniporto visualization, uh, inflow and outflow is managed by the same port. So once we drill down the pedicle again, we gently break the pedicle, medial superior bit of the pedicle, and then we bite it off and then expose the nerve roots, exiting nerve root, you can see here, the base of the SAP is linked to the pedicle, hence uh, we are actually taking down the base of the superior articular process and then uh, taking off the... Uh, once we see the uh, exiting nerve root, we uh, gently using a curette, they are paper thin, so we can uh, basically perform a foraminotomy using the curette and sometimes a size one keratin to uh, gradually enlarging that of the foramen. Subsequently, we palpate the uh, superior lateral aspect of the pedicle once that is uh, well decompressed, um, and then the forminotomy is uh, completed. There's a steep learning curve in uniportal and biportal endoscopic spine surgery in this article that I published with uh, Professor Gamelia Tan and my mentors. And uh, we actually endoscopic cervical surgery are uh, actually in the tertiary or quaternary ladder. So uh, we should perform, we should be well first with uh, primary ladder surgery, such as the discectomy and very comfortable with decompression surgery and fusion possibly before we go on to the uh, uh, cervical scope. Potential complications are similar to open or tubular uh, posterior endoscopic cervical, posterior cervical foraminotomy, such as nerve root injury, spinal cord injury, dura tear, incomplete decompression for the artery injury and instability. Essentially, uh, endoscopy is currently trending. There's a lot of hype about the spine community on endoscopy, uh, international as well as locally. However, um, cervical scope uh, is, uh, the learning curve in endoscopy is steep and cervical scope is a tertiary advanced level endoscopy. Sufficient numbers uh, of uh, lumbar cases should be performed before we perform this uh, type of surgery. And uh, we should uh, be very familiar with the use of endoscopic drill before consideration of this surgery. Um, there are other advanced techniques, and uh, one of them is uh, re uh, we published talking about a partial vertebrotomy and partial particulotomy to uh, enhance the efficacy of uh, discectomy endoscopic from the unibottom posterior endoscopic cervical discectomy. There's also ACDF, and uh, one of my friend, uh, Professor Zhang Wei from China, has shown me this video. He has uh, used a uh, bipotal assisted endoscopic surgery, I think is an evolving technique, is exploring the opportunity and uh, possibility of using bipotal surgery to enhance the uh, ACDF surgery. Uh, I think it is still not published data, it's an exploratory phase rather than a, a well-established technique, uh, but uh, I congratulate him for being a very uh, uh, um, exploratory in this uh, technique and uh, trying to find out other new ways of using bipotal surgery to help in uh, current uh, techniques as alternatives. Essentially, uh, we have shown in our various study that in, uh, published in the recent journal, ACDF is still the gold standard and uh, the foraminotomy is used to compare with ACDF. So there's no clear superiority of the ACDF uh, versus uh, MIS or endoscopic PCF. It's always a subject of discussion between implants versus stability and approach related complications for versus endoscopic learning curve complications uh, is essentially a topic that is uh, going to be uh, frequently discussed in various forums. In conclusion, endoscopic uh, being a, has a 
enhance optical view with instruments to help to see better under saline, access to the nerve roots, and uh, perform minimally invasive uh, technique. With the efficacy in literature, uh, in expert hands similar to open or microscopic uh, PCF in long terms, comparable to ACDF and ADR in long, long terms, uh, with the advantage of minimally invasive uh, procedure and no implants. It can be one of the options for foraminal stenosis and cervical prolapse this. Uh, careful selection of patients and good understanding of handling and um, uh, endoscopic equipment is key to safe and effective surgery. Uh, I welcome any questions. These are my articles as well as uh, uh, textbook literature uh, uh, chapters that uh, talk about cervical endoscopy. It's available uh, online. Thank you very much.